on today's show. Saying goodbye to a fan favorite, but saying hello to another. Going to be talking about the latest addition for the LA Clippers. Brandon Boston Jr. going, saying a sad goodbye to Brandon Boston Jr. and Kai Jones. Going to be talking about them all on today's Lock. Don the Batum Battalion is back, Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes. Sir, you were locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team, every day. I'm your host, Darian Vaziri, born and raised in L.A. And in the summer of my 19th to 20th season as a Clipper fan, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper, L.A. sports, and NBA content. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, your only five-day-a-week Clipper podcast. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube and the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And let me know what you think of Nico Batum being back. Want to talk all about that on this one. The sad departure of Brandon Boston Jr. And then some uh, Kai Jones news. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the best place to get great deals on last minute tickets. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. The date that I am recording this is July fifth. 2024. For those that are good with dates in Clipper history, that marks five years since the announcement came out on Pacific Time that Kawhi Leonard was going to be choosing the Clippers, that he was not going back to Toronto, that he was not going to the Lakers, he was choosing the Clippers, and the reason we got him is because we fulfilled his request of getting that second star, which was Paul George. Five years later, here we are. Paul George has left us this summer. And Kawhi Leonard has not played a real healthy game in front of a sold-out Clipper playoff crowd five years later. We haven't made the finals. Kawhi Leonard has not played a conference finals game for us. We had one season that we were actually in L.A. and won a series with the 2-1-3 duo. Sad looking back. Because I was so excited that day. I mean, you couldn't tell me anything. I was the happiest man on the planet. So much so that the summer camp I was working at, one of the employees that was just really short-tempered was like, why are you so freaking happy, man? Like, it's so annoying. Why this? I'm like, just like, oh, man, this is great that people are knocking me for being so positive. But anyway, this episode is about somebody that actually helped us and helped Kawhi and Paul George get to the conference finals. And he's back. Nico Batum. This was one of the most feel-good moves that we've made. God, I do not know since how long you can go back. Like, I was ecstatic when I heard this news. Nicholas Batum agreeing to a two-year deal worth $9.6 million. There were rumors that he was going to retire in 2024. That would be his last season. But the opportunity to come back with the remaining money that we got, obviously, able to pay certain guys like Derek Jones, Nico Batum, Chris Dunn, who that, that, the, the terms of that deal are still being worked out. That's, I think it's a sign and trade going on there with Utah. So I'm not fully doing an episode on that yet, on the Chris Dunn potential addition. But as far as Nicholas Batum, that's all done. Derek Jones, that's all done. So Nico coming back with some more money from that taxpayer mid level. Two years, $9.6 million. Great deal. Those will likely be the last two years of his career. And, I mean, last season, he instantly showed, even though he's 35 years old, last season he instantly showed with Philly fans why we loved him so much. He played 60 games overall, 57 for the Sixers, just three for our Clippers. And, and look, he looked a little bit revived in the beginning of last season, those first three games. He was guarding Wemby. He was guarding various guys at the four and the five. And I was noticing that because in the 2023 season, he kind of fell off a bit. If you can recall, you know, that was my first season as Locked On Clippers host. But 
His three-point shooting was very up and down, and his defense wasn't as sharp as seasons prior. But then in the beginning of last season, he looked like he was kind of back to that 2022 version, or maybe a little bit worse than that 2022 version. And then when I saw him in Philly, and then I watched him in the playoffs guarding Jalen Brunson, I was like, man, Nico is still very, very good. Very solid at what he does. You know, moves the ball quick, doesn't need to put the ball on the floor too much because he's not a creator. And just does all the little things that help you win games. Keeping rebounds alive, keeping possessions alive, cutting when nobody will, just making high IQ plays, shooting the three ball at a good percentage, and he's able to guard one through five for real. So the fact that we got him back after trading him for James Harden, and like, look, yeah, we didn't want to lose KJ Martin, Robert Covington, Mar Marcus Morris we did want to get rid of, but Robert Covington, that was tough to swallow because he was finally starting starting to get playing time, you know? in the beginning of last season. K.J. Martin, he was added to the team to be a young, athletic guy that was able to pair with Russell Westbrook, Bones Highland, and the, you know, the fast-paced, athletic style that we were kind of promoting in training camp. Nico Batum was really the guy in the trade that we were saddest to lose because Robert Covington, the, he played very well when he got traded here in 2022, but 2023 was frustrating. You remember my constant pleas for more Robert Covington on these shows? It was tough. We never really got to experience a full season of what Robert Covington could do. And neither did Sixers fans this past season because he was injured so much. But Nico was available. And he still missed 22 games. And in 2022, he missed 23 games. So he's older now. He's going through his small injuries. But no very serious injuries. And in 2023, he played 78 games. And he played in all six games of the playoffs this year. He played in all five games of the playoffs last year. And he played in the 19 games for us in 2021. So for the most part, Nico's there when it matters. And the fact that we're, we basically got back the centerpiece of the Harden trade. Obviously, that unprotected first rounder is really the biggest asset. The most valuable asset. But in terms of the actual players, we got the best player back. Now we're going to have another guy at the point of attack with Derek Jones and Terrence Mann. That can switch. Now we have the ability to go with Nico, Kawhi, and Derek Jones, and Terrence Mann and James Harden out there, or even substitute Terrence Mann for Norm, have that Harden-Norm-Kawhi trio that did so well with Derek Jones and Nico Batum and have a small ball lineup that can switch everything again. So it is just such a luxury. And not to mention, the guy is just a fan favorite. The Batum Battalion, you know, the way he interacted with fans the way you didn't hear one bad thing about him from teammates from media from fans he was interacting with the fans on social media i mean it was just he's just one of us he's just one of us he spent three fantastic years here was such a big part of our team that ended up breaking that second round curse Part of a 2022 team that really entertained fans like myself that went to a lot of games, even when Paul George missed 51 and Kawhi Leonard missed all 82, Nico Batum was able to provide good two-way play to help us get those 42 wins. I'm so happy he's back, and it's surely going to make us a better team. It really is. Not saying we're going to be better because of Nico and Derek Jones as opposed to losing Paul George. Nico and Derek Jones don't add up to Paul George. But hey, man, we're at least supplementing them. Uh, supplementing Paul with something and these guys can guard and they're going to guard more than Paul because that's what's going to be out there for primarily so I'm excited man I'm really excited to have Nico back last season just to end it off on the segment last season he averaged five and a half points a game four rebounds two assists on 46 percent from the field 40 from three again with Nico there is absolutely no point of talking about stats with him he is a guy who completely has an impact that goes beyond the stat sheet. And you're going to see that this season if you haven't been familiar with Nico Batum's game. But coming up, going to be talking about the sad departure of one of Clipper Nation's own homegrown guys, Brandon Boston Jr. Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. 
With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to you as customers. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the sad departure of Brandon Boston Jr. I mean, it's not really a departure. We didn't extend him a qualifying offer. And that's sad because, you know, Brandon is a guy we picked. And I remember, you know, 51st overall felt like a steal. In the 2021 draft, he has potential. He really does. But it's tough on a win-now team when you have a guy that isn't really able to be kind of an Amir Coffee. You know, just a guy that spots up and shoots, plays off of stars. He's kind of a guy that wants to get the ball and go get his own. That kind of style is... Tough to mesh with stars. It is tough to mesh with stars when, you know, you're kind of a self-creator that's not the best catch-and-shoot guy. And we are a win-now team right now. So Brandon's really never gotten a chance. My thing is, we're clearly old. We clearly lack athleticism. He's young and athletic. Can he be a consistent rotation piece, though? And I think that's what the front office really thought about and was like, you know what, he hasn't really shown that. So they didn't extend him a qualifying offer. It's very disappointing for me because I'm somebody who's looking past this era of Clipper basketball because it just seems the like the window's closed. And I want Brandon Boston to get his chance to get shots up, to work through his mistakes. You know, for those that think he got a chance, I think he got a chance to show if he could be in a role, in a win-now team where he could play a role. And I don't think he could. I think he was the kind of guy that needs to be part of a, you know, a team that's not either not – in contention to win a championship or not trying to be in contention to win a championship or he's kind of in that Norman Powell role where he's essentially just the guy that comes off the bench to get buckets. Now the thing is right now he probably won't be the most efficient. He's still learning how to score on the NBA level and he hasn't really gotten consistent reps throughout a season to work through his mistakes and to really learn, huh, okay, I can do this on just about anybody. I got to work on this. And I think there's no better teacher than the reps at that stage. Reading Brandon Boston's stats for the Clippers, the season he played the most was actually his rookie season because we didn't have Kawhi or Paul George, and he is a wing. And in that season, he played 15 minutes a game when he played, seven points, two rebounds, on 38.5% shooting and 31 from three. So he didn't shoot well from the field or from three. He had that amazing game against the Celtics that nobody will ever forget, Brandon Boston against Boston. That would made us think, like, oh, my God, this guy's going to be special. The following season, and mind you, before that season started, Jerry West said that he thinks Brandon Boston will be a star one day. Rest in peace with the great Jerry West. I don't think his prediction will come true, but I'll tell you this. If Jerry West was advocating for him that much, that's enough for me to believe in the guy. And for everything I saw, I think that Brandon Boston was a talent, was a guy that could get his own shot, was a tough shot maker, had a handle. Uh, but the thing is, he just didn't really create enough space at the NBA level yet, he didn't get by his defender well enough at the NBA level yet because he was on the skinnier side. You know, he still has to put on some pounds. You need to put on some muscle. But, man, he did have potential of when he gets going, he can go. He's athletic. He just has a knack for putting the ball in the basket. And I just think with scorers like that, they just need to get more comfortable playing against NBA competition. And he just didn't really get an extended run there. His second season, 2023, he barely played. 22 games, 6.5 points a game on 42% from the field and 41 from three. And that's when I started noticing some off, some defensive stuff. Because the first year, you know, you saw he wasn't ready to play NBA defense. He was getting bullied, didn't really move his feet like that. But then he probably started realizing that, look, I'm not going to be able to get on the court unless I guard. So I started noticing his ability in the passing lanes because he's got some really long arms. You know, he has good anticipation in the passing lanes. And he was trying harder. You know, the last two years when he was out there guarding, 
whether it be point of attack or off ball, I thought he was trying harder. It's just that he was still a little skinnier and the teams are going to attack him. But I wouldn't call him a liability by any stretch. I think he's got defensive potential as well. Again, I truly just don't believe he has gotten enough of a chance to be the player that he is. I don't think he's the guy that can just play off the stars and be a catch-and-shoot guy that just 3 and D. I just don't think that's who he is as a basketball player. And clearly the Clippers felt, well, you're not going to get that opportunity here. So that's it. And it just makes me sad. You know, last season, 32 games played, 5 points a game, 40% from the field, 27% from 3. There was a stretch where he was starting to get some minutes. You know, I believe it was Amir Coffee that was out. But it just wasn't anything consistent. It wasn't really anything consistent. And, yeah, he had one game where he had 23 points. We lost to Phoenix, started getting going at the end. So I wish Brandon Boston the absolute best. We drafted him. It's really unfortunate it didn't work out for us. And I wanted to see him eventually get his chance. But we'll see. You know, he, for all we know, I just could just could I could just be the optimist. And he might not even be an NBA player like that. But we'll see. I'm hoping for the best. We'll see what team he ends up going to. And I'll, def, I'll definitely keep an eye on him. But coming up, going to be talking about Kai Jones, the recent news with him, and what potential impact he can make on the team. Going to be talking about that coming up. All right, so talking about the most recent news, this is as of July 5th. Law Murray, our most recent guest here on Locked On Clippers, tweeted that when that uh, actually it was Sham Sharania that broke it but Kai Jones has agreed to a non-guaranteed deal to return to the Clippers obviously he didn't really get a chance to play last season when he was signed towards the end of the year but he has agreed to a non-guaranteed deal and a non-guarantee is similar to what Isaiah Hartenstein has so it's like a training camp deal when training camp begins this is what Law tweeted when training camp begins Kai Jones will be 23 years old and on a one-year non-guaranteed minimum with a chance to make Clippers roster as the third center. Three years ago, a 23-year-old center was signed to a non-guaranteed deal by the Clippers and won a roster spot in camp. That was Isaiah Hardenstein. If Kai Jones could be anything close to what Isaiah Hardenstein was for us in 2022, oh my God, we're going to be in business next year. I tend to think that that's wishful thinking. However, look, Kai Jones is an athletic player. He's very much a prospect. And the Charlotte Hornets, you know, they cut their ties with him. He was posting strange stuff on social media. I remember those tweets. Didn't he? I think he made a tweet that said "trade me" at one point. So it was a strange stuff. Uh, he's from Nassau, Bahamas. Went to high school in Orlando, Florida, and also Brewster Academy in New Hampshire before going to Texas. The 19th overall pick in the 2021 draft by the Knicks, but he had only played for the Charlotte Hornets in two seasons. 21 games in 2022, averaged just one point a game and played three minutes. It's nothing really to take from that. And then 2023, his most recent NBA season, 46 games played, 12 minutes a game, three points, three rebounds. So you're really not seeing anything from Kai Jones to suggest that just statistically that he even belongs in the NBA. But it's I, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if he can earn his way onto the roster. I'm rooting for him. It's always good to have an athletic center of any sort. Athletic bigs. I mean, we really lack that. That's the potential, right? That's what we're hoping for, and hopefully it works out. That's all I can really say about it. But overall, the premise of this episode, the goal of this episode, is to get you excited that Nico Batum is back. Nico Batum is back. It's really sad that we lost Brandon Boston Jr. That's going to hurt. Um, but as far as the other additions to our roster, I'm going to hold off on the Chris Dunn episode. But it's looking okay. We just It would be really nice to get that power forward. We're still lacking it. It would be nice to move Kawhi Leonard down to the three. So keep an eye out on that. Clippers trying to go for that power forward. We are a little guard heavy right now. When, you, when it comes down to Harden and Bones and Terrence Mann, and if we get Chris Dunn, some tough decisions are going to have to be made. Of course, we still have Russell Westbrook on the roster, but he's on the potentially on the move. I haven't really done an episode on that. There's really not, no point of dedicating an episode to that because 
I mean, at best, we can get maybe a second-round pick or a couple second-rounders, but I don't think they're getting a first-round or anything significant from Russell Westbrook right now with his stock at an all-time low. So that may be a segment worth, but not an episode worth. But, yeah, I am excited about Nico Batum. The Batum Battalion is back. It's going to be so great. I mean, how much does that tell you that he loves this organization, this franchise? He wanted to come back to L.A. It was obviously very tough for him to move to Philadelphia. He wanted to stay here. He wanted to retire here. He had this revival of his career here after some rough closing seasons with Charlotte where, of course, the money that he got paid, he was never going to play up to that value and that definitely made him kind of a villain so to so to speak in Charlotte because of the contract that they paid him but he was revived with us and with Ty Lu and it's going to be great to see him back playing for the Clippers and being in the Intuit Dome era like come on this is just special Nicholas Batum being a guy that was part of the most successful Clipper team in franchise history for him to be able to open up our new arena a guy that everybody likes so much I love so much and I'm gonna be honest I mean the likability factor of the team matters for me. And I thought last season was the hardest Clipper team for me that, to like in terms of the players on it and the combination in my time as a Clipper fan. I kid you not. Because even those really bad teams when I was young, I was really young. So these guys, I was these, these are my heroes. It's a little different now, the age that I'm at. And yeah, we don't really have really homegrown players. I've mentioned that several times. Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, Brandon Boston, Kobe Brown, the only ones. But coming up, I'll do an episode on Jordan Miller, Kobe Brown, their chances of potentially playing this season. I did talk about our most recent rookies added to the roster, Trenton Flowers and Cam Christie in the last episode. But Derek Jones Jr., Nico Batum, some of the guys that we've been able to pick up. Oh, also Mo Bamba. I haven't talked about him yet. So I think next episode we'll touch on Mo Bamba. But Nico Batum, Mo Bamba, hopefully Chris Dunn, Derek Jones Jr., of course replacing the money that we would have used to re-sign Paul George. Of course, none of those things and none of those things combined, or none of those players, shouldn't call them things, none of those players combined equal that value of Paul George, equal the impact of Paul George. But let's see how else they, you know, round out the roster before this upcoming season begins. But it's not looking that bad right now, and Nico definitely makes me feel better. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DimeDropperPod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper, NBA, and L.A. sports content throughout the offseason. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you comment on how you're feeling about Nico being back. Make sure you comment on anything I said to comment about throughout the episode. And subscribe and hit the notification bell. Every single time we post a video is crucial. I've been trying to get everybody to get Locked On Clippers to 6k we are climbing up the ladder of locked on nba teams i want everyone to know how real clipper nation really is nico batum welcome back baby batum battalion get ready to be back in activation in that wall the age-old proverb continues go clippers